bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy, holy name. Welcome to New Life Christian Fellowship here at 1321 Providence Road in the city of Brandon, Florida. Amen. This is the place to be. If you haven't heard it on the news, everybody's moving to Florida. So you, if you're not here locally, we invite you, we encourage you to come on down and visit us. If you're here locally in the area, we also encourage you to come on by and be a part to be in this physical service that we host every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and every Sunday at 11 a.m. We thank and praise God for our pastor, Bishop Dr. Robert L. Register, amen, and all of those servants who labor here to host this service for you, to encourage you, to exhort you in the name of the Lord. We trust that you will be getting your Bibles, those of you who are viewing and connecting with us via Facebook Live, and those of you who will be connecting with us via YouTube, we thank and praise God that you have an opportunity to get in your car in here, or to be at work, or to, on your lunch break, of course, to get in your home and get settled in as we experience this worship hour together. Amen. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 12, now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and thee shall all thy families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abram was, very, was 70 and five years old when he departed out of Haran. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We know that this is a church, a place, oh God, a location that you have caused many of us to come together to get us out of our own original states, our lands that we were born in, God. And you have caused us to come together as transplants from different places in the United States, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, that your hand of mercy and grace and protection and guidance have brought us all together under this umbrella, under the leadership of our pastor, Father Bishop Robert Register. And we thank you, God, what you're doing now, what you've already done, and what you're going to do, God. We trust you in all things, Father God, and we thank you for making this house the house that you choose to bless us in, Lord. The house that you choose to edify, Lord, the house that you choose that your name will be glorified through us as we come together, God, to worship your name, as we come together to grow in the grace and the knowledge of you, Father. We thank you, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory, Lord. We dedicate this service unto you, God, and we ask you to have your way, Father. Have your way with the music. Have your way with the word. Have your way with the teaching, Lord. Have your way with the experience for those who are worshiping with us via Facebook Live. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for you tonight. We bless God. We uh, thank you so much, the women's department, amen, as they uh, celebrated their women's service, amen, and I wanted to reflect on a song, amen, that we didn't get a chance to do, it says, on the battlefield for the Lord. If you're at home, come on, get up out of your seat if you're at home. Tell the kids to go in their rooms or they can join you in praising God with you. I'm on the battlefield for the Lord. Listen. 
I'm a soldier on the battlefield and I'm fighting. I promise him that I serve him until I die and I'm fighting.
Imagine, she said, how many races have you ever seen where people run? They start, they start out running one way, then all of a sudden they turn around and start then going in the other direction. My, my, my. my God. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Ain't no turning back. No turning back.
Hallelujah. I would tell the church to give the band a hand now, but good God Almighty, I'm going to give you one. Glory to God. Man, you're, He's so faithful to us, Bishop. You're worked up. We, are, we, came, we came to praise him regardless, up, regardless of what day it is. Hey, hey, he's worthy to be praised. Hey, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all, all, all he's done for me, I got to get excited about it. I don't know about you. But he's been good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hell yeah. Oh, Jesus. Good to see you, Ryan. Man, good to see you, man. Uh, glad when they said unto me, come and let us go. What you do? Sing something else? One little praise song and we're going to get out your way, Bishop. The song says he's always, he's a father to the fatherless, he's Jehovah Jireh, always, hallelujah, a little praise song we got, listen, father I trust you, father I trust you, in spite of what's going on in the world today, right. father I trust you. Always, that's why, that's why we need you, can do life without you, Father I trust you, always, come on if you believe that with us, come on put your hands together and give God praise, come on Father I trust you, say Father I trust you, Father I trust you, Father, I trust you. That's right. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust, trust you. When? Always. Always. Father, I need you. Father, I need you. Hallelujah. Can't do life without you. Can't do life without you. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. Always. Father, please heal me. Say, Father, please. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal. The world needs healing today. Father, Father, please heal me. Always, always. Father, please. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. That's it. Father, please. Father, please heal me. Always. Let's do it one more time. Father, please heal me. Father, please, Father, heal me. Always, always. Father, please heal me. Father, please heal me. And bring me victory. And bring me the victory. Father, Father, please heal me. Always, always. Father, provide for me. Supply every one of my needs. Father, provide for me. Father, provide for me. Always. Always. One more time. Father, provide for me. Father, provide for me. Hallelujah. Father, provide for me. Come on. Father, provide for me.
Everybody trust in your name. Father, I trust you. Can't do life. Can't do life without you. Father, I trust you. Always. Last time, Father. Father, I trust you. Yeah. Father, I trust you. Father, I trust you. glad you came in and tuned in tonight virtually cyberspace come on into this space with us tonight we bless God for your your timeliness amen go with me to Matthew 24 verse 1 through 12 I want to talk to you tonight about end time prophecies and end time living and the benefits of knowing the two end time prophecies and end time living I don't think that you could have things that go on like we've just seen and witness and and keep your program like nothing has happened. And these things that we see are things that have been foretold. Let's pray. Father, have your way in this place tonight. Guide me like a ready writer. Give me the tongue of the learned bend my will to your way that your people might be fed tonight they might be uplifted they might be given instructions dear God have your way in the midst of your people no matter where they're tuning in and no matter what time they're tuning in let the anointing of God flow have your way we give you thanks for those that have tuned in as the word goes forth it shall not come back void but it shall accomplish everything that is being sent to do we bless the people of God tonight in Jesus name somebody say amen. amen Matthew chapter 24 verse 1 through 12 give it to me in the um, if you have the Christian standard um, edition I think that's what I'm looking for CSB you don't have that give it to me in the NL um, in the NLT try that and Jesus was leaving the temple grounds his disciples pointed out to him the various temple buildings but he responded do you see all these buildings he said I tell you the truth they will be completely demolished not one stone will be left on top of another later Jesus said on the Mount of Olives his disciples came to him privately and said tell us when will all this happen somebody say prophecies what sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. You will hear wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end, will, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation kingdom against kingdom there will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the world but all of this is only the first of the birth pains which more to come then you will be arrested persecuted and killed you'll be hated all over the world because you are my followers and many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many people, verse 12. And sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow cold. 
so for the scripture i want to talk to you tonight about end time prophecies and end time living amen first let me start by saying that, that there are benefits in knowing prophetic but we're we are a church that we're spirit-led but we also embrace the prophetic the prophetic the prophetic today that we that we hear about all times most of the prophetic that's being done today is we encourage each other that's what the prophetic is the prophetic is, is no such not so much of foretelling more so of encouraging in the new testament it is not limited to just encouragement there is foretelling there but as you've seen in the recent months and years there's been some misdiagnosis from the prophets there's been a lot of things that the prophets of God have missed lately. I wish I had a witness. They missed completely the pandemic, and they've missed this war. And if they said they, they spoke about it, I, I've I said previously that, that things were going to get bad. And I'm talking about being able to, to accurately predict something. And the prophecy and the prophetic is real. As well as learning how to navigate and live during these times. The first thing that I want you to understand about the text this morning is Jesus makes a very profound acknowledgement about what we have to face today. He says that, in, in fact, give it to me in the King James Version, um, Matthew 24. And, and give it, look at, give, give me, um, uh, look at me verse 4. Verse 4, and he said upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us when shall these things. Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no man deceive you. So the first thing that we must be very, very careful and guarded against is deception. I, I mean, the, 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 the level of deception that's going on today is beyond imagination. One thing I, I want you to know, I, I, as I said, this took place the other day, the shooting in Texas. When we were growing up, nobody got shot in schools. It's not because evil wasn't present. Evil was here. Somebody said evil was here. Somebody said guns were here. They were here, and evil was being manifested everywhere. Don't lose this. We hear that a lot, that in the good old days, certain things didn't take place. That's, that's right. None of us got shot in school. We didn't have to worry about getting shot in school. Maybe the teacher beating you behind. Maybe something like that. Maybe somebody beating you up, but nobody got shot. You might get cut, maybe, but nobody got shot. Somebody says, this is a phenomenon. No, it's not a phenomenon. The problem is, in verse 12, it says, in the last hours of the last era of days of humanity, the, the love of many will wax cold and sin will increase. So that means that there's more evil on the planet now than there was then. Somebody say amen to that. That, that means that there, the, 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 there are more people and there's more opportunity to commit evil. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And so when we talk about deception, the word deception is the act of causing someone to accept as true what is false or invalid. Think about that for a minute. That somebody is trying to make you accept something that they know already is false and even worse is not valid. The amount of deception, oh God help me, and when you talk about deception, this is, the, this is called the act of deceiving, to be fooled or scammed. How many people we know are getting scammed today? By all kinds of things, scam artists. There's a spirit of craftiness, crookedness, cunning, dishonesty. There's an inclination or practice of misleading others through lies or trickery. And there's an extreme case of fraud. We, we seem just within this pandemic, fraud being committed like, like nobody's ever seen before. So the question we ask in this hour of deception, what causes normal, intelligent citizens, great people, friends, family members of the world to be so easily deceived? Why are so many people caught up in politics and, 
and politicians and guns and right now they're, they're arguing about whether or not you should be able to get an assault rifle. Why are so many people? And, and listen, it, it's, not, it's not foolish people that are deceived. It's people that are in high places that are deceived. Our politicians seem to be deceived. They can't seem to get, get to a place of agreement. Information is so easily accessible. That's one reason why this deception is so, so vast. Information is easily accessible and easily distorted depending on who's doing the reporting. You got to remember who controls the airways. Look at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. Somebody controls the airwaves. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. See that? So whenever you turn on your news, you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff. You might get the news, but you're going to get some distortion. You got to be careful. Watch this. And, and the way you watch this, the way you listen to the news, the way you read the news is through the right filter. Somebody say the right filter. Because you know that the enemy is still operating through the airwaves. Our country is so divided now. How are we divided? Through the airwaves. CBS ain't CBS no more. NBC ain't NBC no more. It, it seems like everybody has an agenda. Now it's about Fox. It's about MSNBC. Everybody has an agenda except the agenda that makes us better. Ephesians 2, through, in time past we walked according to the course of this world, according to the principle of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Look at 1 Peter 5 and 8. Talking about the airwaves, the information, highway. We get all this stuff we listen to, we buy into. First Peter 5 and 8. First Peter 5 and 8. Let me get there. Okay. First Peter 5 and 8. It says, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So we know he's not literally walking. He's in the air. Somebody say he's in the air. Mm -hmm. He's in the airwaves. In, in the air, he's in, the, he's in a certain uh, a space. That's why sometimes our prayers are blocked, because he's in the airwaves. There's principalities over the airways. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, and give that to me in the King James Version and then in the NLT. In whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Give that to me in the NLT. Satan, who is the God of this world. See that? Airways. He's the God of this world. So the, 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 lack of, the lack of consistency and information and the distortion, it comes from the enemy. Satan, who's the God of this world, has blinded the mind of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Then we have to understand, watch this. When you talk about being deceived, how is it that, that intelligent people in this particular time period can be so easily deceived? It has something to do with the culture and the true substance of the citizens in this era and generation that we're dealing with. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 to 5. See, the reason that people are, Anna, the reason that people are, we can deceive people, hey, I'm talking. The reason we can deceive people uh, uh, today is because the, 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 the culture that the people live in and the mentality and their personality and the things that they are connected to. Look, what the, look at the, the type of people we're dealing with. For people will love only themselves. Hmm? People will love only themselves. So, so you're dealing with a lot of people that are self-absorbed. 
when you're self-absorbed, guess what? It's easy to become distorted. It's because you believe something about yourself that might not even be true. For people love only themselves, their money, they'll be boastful and proud, scoffers at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be unloving. I'm talking about why, we, why, why is it so easy to deceive the people of this era? It's because they're unloving. They're unforgiving. They'll slander others and they have no self-control. They'll be cruel and they will hate what is good. This is why it's easy to deceive them. They'll betray their friends. You, you, you're my friend, but how could you be deceived now to not be my friend? They'll be reckless. People that were steady and stable, all of a sudden now they're reckless. People that are kind and, and walk in humility will begin to be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. Stay away from people like that. So we're dealing with the, the culture now. Somebody say the culture. It's easily deceived. This is why when, when the pandemic hit, so many people were saying so many different things. We had educated people drop dead from COVID-19 because they, they thought it was a lie. Come to find out it was no lie. So they were deceived. Somebody said they were deceived. Listen, even in this age, the deception, you got to be very careful. Even when you're ministering to someone, because when they begin to share their heart to you, you got to know that people truly want help when they are not blaming others. When you, when, listen, I'm talking about deception. Jesus says, I'm warning you about this being deceived. He said you're going to be in an environment where you're going to have to be on your P's and Q's because people are going to tell you one thing it's going to mean something else. He said, even when you get to a place where you start ministering to people, you can't really trust them either. Because sometimes what they'll tell you, they don't even know whether it's true or not. Or okay, ain't nobody walking with me. Because most people, when they had, are sick and tired of being sick and tired, they're not going to point the finger at nobody. They're going to accept responsibility themselves because they want out. So we got to be careful that we're not deceiving ourselves. Look at James chapter 1 and look at verse 12 and 13. Watch this. First, you have to understand this. God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God had promised to those who love him. Look, but look at 13. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say that God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. So when you're ministering to people in this era, in this age, you got to be careful that you're not dealing with somebody who's operating from a place of deception. They're telling you that, that, that their problem is this, but their real problem is something else. If you're not careful, you get caught up in the smoke and not the reality of what they're dealing with. Anybody hear what I'm saying? So here's what, here's what when I'm dealing with a, a deception, I know I'm in a, a time of deception. Watch this. As I said to you earlier, I have to view things through the right lens. But, but most importantly, it's imperative that you develop an authentic relationship with God and his word. So that you can test the, ver the veracity of people, persons, places, and things that capture your attention and put a demand on your heart and your purpose. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. See, I've got to look at everything through the veneer or through, through, the, through the lens of the Bible. I've got to measure what I'm looking at. I've got to examine what I'm feeling what I'm sensing, 
Not based on my experiences, but based on God's word. Why? Because I'm dealing in a, in a period, in a, in a season of, of grand deception. I got to make sure I'm not deceiving myself. The Bible said in the last days, even the very elect will be deceived. So he warns us about the spirit of deception. That people will operate in a level of deception that's beyond imagination. Now, he says something. I want to go back to something just for a moment. Go back to uh, Matthew 24 and verse 8 in the King James. He says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So, a sign that we've come into a place of sorrow is the spirit of deception. And what is sorrow? It is deep distress. Those people in Texas right now, they're going through a distress that's so deep that it's only going to, it's, it, the only person that's going to be able to anchor them out of that is God. I've heard people say, we're praying for you. That's what prayer will work over time. But there's no magic pill for what they got to deal with. I wish I had a witness in here. And when Jesus says that these are the beginnings of sorrows, you got to be very careful that you don't walk and allow yourself to get caught up in the deception or scheme or plot that the enemy drags you in and you experience sorrow and distress. Sorrow, distress, sadness. And regret. And he's talking about the kind of sorrow when you lose something and you lose somebody. So the key for the enemy is to deceive you to the degree that you lose something that's significant in your life. Even for those that think they got nothing, he want, he, you still got your soul. What does the Bible say? What profit a man if he gained the whole what? And loses his soul. See, the disciples, they were aroused. They, they had these questions. They wanted to know, when would this temple be destroyed? In fact, the temple was destroyed probably about 40 years after Jesus' death. But he was prophetically telling them that in the not-so-distant future, they would see it come down. As I've shared with you over the course of some time, that I have a, I'm challenged today because I got to call it like I see it. And, 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 and some of my, my, my contemporaries and my peers, they seem to get, they seem to got a gospel that makes everything seem to be all right. And everything ain't all right. There's challenges that we face every day. There's people that, 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 that are dealing with all sorts of, of, of hardships that some are insurmountable, just like we just experienced in, in, in Buffalo and, and in Texas. And these are reoccurring sorrow, the beginning of sorrow. Somebody said beginning. The signs of birth pain. And see, we know we're not at the end because, see here, we would like people to dis make us think that the church is under persecution. I've come to announce to you today that the church in this country is not really under that much persecution. There's a, there's a, there's a group of people that, that will say they are. That's why you got to keep your ears open. You got to keep your ears open, your heart your heart right with God because just because people say a thing don't mean it's true. Amen. Listen, what people really want today is they want authentic Christianity. I said they want authentic Christianity. They don't want no game. They don't want no hustle. They don't want to be hustled by nobody. They don't want to be deceived nobody. They want the real thing. And what we've been seeing is not authentic. It's not real. And so the very next thing that he says 
after he says that you got to watch out for deception, he says, watch out for these false messiahs. Now, what does he mean by false messiahs? Everybody can't be Jesus. We don't hear every pastor, every prophetic voice, every, every uh, ministerial gift saying that they're Christ. But watch this now. The representation of Christ on the earth is the church. How many churches on the planet are saying that they represent him? But they really don't. He says, many will come in my name. What does this really mean, practically speaking? It means representation. Somebody said representation. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, somebody say therefore. Uh -huh. So, if it, give it to me in the um, New King James Version. Therefore, if anyone, anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creature. All things have passed away. They passed away. Unless you're a false church. There has to be some evidence that there's some new creativity in your space. We're not still looking at the old man. I wish I had an amen in here. That the old man is not dominating the space that you're in no more. If any, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Look at verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So now, when he says here, many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. And he said, they'll be really false prophets. And what we, we, we already talked about what a, what. What deception is, it's, it's somebody trying to cause you to accept something as true that's either false or invalid. I remember when I first got here, uh, after being overseas and coming to the U.S. and getting in the church and being green and being young and had not had no education yet. And every time they said give a thousand, I just couldn't wait till I had a thousand dollars in my pocket to give. And then I got hip. I said, wait a minute. My man raised no fool here. Something going on ain't right. You have to get you an education. If you're going to do well in church, you need to get this book, that Bible over. You better get the reading, get your concordance. Why? Because just because they say it don't mean they're living it. You've got to be able to discern the spirit. In the space that you say you're learning from. The Bible tells us that we got to try the spirit by the spirit. To see what spirit it is. Has to be tested. Somebody said it has to be tested. We're not experienced. Listen, when we have church on Sunday, nobody's out here stopping us from coming. To, I hear people complaining of all these little complaints about church people. That's not persecution. That's just you having a difficult time adjusting in an environment where you ain't the grand poopa. You know, remember, people are lovers of themselves. They've deceived themselves because when they come in here, they think they're, they think or they want you to believe they love everybody. But they, in reality, they really love themselves. How? Because it, 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 the, the minute you start paying attention to other people, 
The minute you start giving somebody else more attention, you give that person, you realize that you got a problem on your hand. Anybody hear what I'm saying? And, and, and they think they came to church to help you, but they came to church really to be a hindrance. And you don't know it because you don't see the deception. The spirit of deception is subtle. That's why you and I have to walk circumspectfully. You know, the Bible says circumspectly. It means that you're watching where you walk. You're watching where you're stepping at. You're watching who you're talking to. You, 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 you're calculating your steps. For the steps of a good person are ordered by the Lord. So we can ill afford to misrepresent Jesus. That's why you got to get in where you fit in. You don't fit in in every church. But you do fit in in, in a church. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, God places members in church according to his own pleasure. So if you have a problem about your position in church, guess what? It ain't the pastor's problem. It ain't the deacon's problem. It's a problem that you have in your own mind or your heart or based, based on how you see yourself and how you see the place being ran. You might have caught the spirit of deception. And you bought into an, uh, 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 an, a, 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 an idea that you're more important than others. Or you might buy into the idea that nobody loves you. All these different deceitful and deceptive tricks that the enemy will use on the people that go to church. And then they come in here and they're all touchy feeling about the people that they're having relationship with. And the Bible says to us, know them that you labor with. Why do I have to know you? So that the enemy doesn't use the spirit of deception to make me think that somehow or another you don't like me. Because I still struggle with my self-worth. I still struggle with how I see myself. I still don't feel as valuable as you do. So if you do something or say something that kind of reminds me of where I was, it might throw me off. And we can't ever get anything done if we keep dealing with broken people that have not admitted they are not whole. Jesus asked that man, will thou be made whole? And the man started talking, I ain't got nobody to help me. Hey, listen, obviously you didn't hear me. So many people come to the altar and ask for prayer, but they don't want to be made whole. They want pieces of their life fixed, but they don't want their whole life fixed. They want God to fix this and fix that, but don't fix me. Fix my child and fix my job and fix my money, but just leave me alone for a little while. We have to represent Christ in the balcony, in the sound booth, as ushers, as ministers of music. Our representation is critical to salvation, to extending the offer of salvation to the lost. How we represent Christ. That's why we have to guard ourselves when we're in here. We have to watch what we say to each other. Why? Because people are watching us. Two things I want to get into tonight. One, in the text when you talk about the prophetic, most of the prophetic that we see today in, 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 the, in, in the New Testament the prophetic is to encourage. But the prophetic can also be used to foretell. But the Bible says when we foretell, we only foretell in part. So sometimes when we preach, when we're declaring the prophetic, watch this. We're only saying what you should already know. If, if God says to me, and I look at you and say, man, do you realize you're blessed? You could be broke. You realize God has a, there's an anointing on you to be rich. And you say, man, are you sure? 
because I ain't got two nickels in your pocket. Listen, it doesn't matter what you have in your pocket. It matters what God has said about you. And normally what God has said about you and he put it in somebody else's mouth, you've heard it already. That's why sometimes you say, man, I heard it before. Amen. Confirmation. So the prophetic is used to encourage, enlighten, and to, and to get you to a place where you move beyond where you've been sitting. When Jesus said to the man, take up thy, he was speaking prophetically to him. Will thou be made whole? He already knew what he was going to do. These were prophetic words that he was saying to somebody that was living, as I shared earlier. End time prophecies and end time living. You got to know how to navigate and live in the end times. They said 45,000 people lost their life on the highway last year. So guess what? When I'm on the highway, i got to be very careful. Hmm? They said gun violence is going up excessively. Guess what? When I go out in the streets, i got to be guarded. Why? Hey, there's a, there's a call on my life. That means I can't allow myself to be deceived to go places I ain't got no business being. I can't go through doors that God don't want me to go through. Why? Listen, if there's one thing that I'm learning about life right now, there's some things you won't, you won't know until you get of age. You won't really understand death until you get close to death. You think that you'll understand death when you're young and somebody died, but you won't really understand death until death begins to knock at your door. When you begin to experience what your mortality is, then you begin to understand God is, this, one, this is why he says, and I'm closing, this is why the Bible says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We don't have certain things on our mind until we grow up into that, until we get to that place. You don't think about certain things until you get to that place. It's not on your mind. You might have, you, it, it might be things that are running through your mind, but they don't capture your heart. End time prophecies and end time living and the benefits of knowing. God wants us to know his word. When we look out, we wake up in the morning, we hear cr crazy things being said over the radio, over the TV. And people saying these things are happening and this is over here and that's over there. And monkey pox and all these things are going on. He don't want us to panic. He wants us to be cool as cucumbers. I mean, if somebody's shooting, he don't want us to walk. We got to run. Amen. I ain't going to see there's somebody busting caps. I'm going to sit there and say, the Lord is on my side. <laughs> no, no, no. He on my side, but I'm going to be running. Especially if I ain't got my peace on me. You got to be smart. Somebody's got to be smart. We're living in a difficult time. We've, we shared that on the uh, uh, Women's Day. Perilous time. Said it on Sunday. And, and Monday it manifested how perilous these times are. And we don't know what tomorrow's bringing. Tomorrow's got its own other set of problems. And reason why we need to be watching for the prophetic, watch this. The Bible says he might come back like a thief in the night. That's the prophecy. You don't know when he's coming back. So, so the, 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 the question is, I got to be ready. Somebody say, I got to be ready. Come on, that's, that's it. I got to be ready. I got to be ready. Why? I don't know when he's coming back. You can go to bed one way and wake up, in the, wake up in the morning, and it's a whole different world you're getting up to. End time prophecies and end time living. Many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. What does this really mean today, practically speaking? It means representation. Who really represent him? Just because it says outside and they see a church or they see a a, a marker, it doesn't mean that that building represent him. Because it's not the building, it's the people. There has to be love in here. And there is. 
Somebody say there is. Now you'll get some people say, man, you know what? They don't love me. It's all right. But there's love here. Father, have your way in this place. I thank you for your word that has gone forth tonight. We don't want to be deceived. And we don't want to deceive ourselves. And we don't want to be deceived by others. And Father, we dare not represent you inappropriately. So many people have a problem with the church today. Because of, the, of our representation. What we say and what we do. We don't always act like you. We don't always talk like you. We don't always love like you. Help us see our faults. Give us course correction right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives. We thank you. I thank you for the people that tune in tonight. Bless them and keep them. Cause your faces shine upon them. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. We're going to take up an offering. Good to see you, man. All right. see you, Marcus. How many glad they came to church tonight? Are you glad that you tuned in? If you did, come on now. It's time to give. Giving is an act of worship. We want you to participate in giving. Sow your seed. Get your checkbook out. Get your card out. The information is on your screen now. Father, we thank you for those who have a heart for this ministry, for this work, for you. We thank you for their seed, their love offering, and their tithe. Father, we ask that you give back seed to the sower and bread to the eater and rebuke the devourer for the tither in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. Somebody say amen. We have any announcements? Yeah, we're going to have service on Sunday. Ap Apostle Richard Williams is from, from, Trinidad, from Trinidad is coming here. He's also a prophet. He's going to be with us, him and his family. They're going to be here Sunday at 11 o'clock. We're going to also have uh, Pastor Calvary's church, um, Open Bible, uh, their Spanish church. They're going to be meeting with us here. So come on out. We're going to have a grand time. We probably have some refreshments in the back. If that's all we got, amen, we're going to have our benediction. Let's stand for the benediction. Thank you for tuning in. Hit like and share. You a winner. I said you a winner. You are victorious. In spite of your circumstances and what you've been dealing with, you are a winner. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And you can do all things through Christ. He's gone. He's Emmanuel, God with us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's our Alpha and He's our Omega. Father, we bless you tonight. We thank you for the divine blessings of Jesus. We thank you for the cross and Calvary. We thank you for the blood that separates us from sin. We thank you, dear God, for the grace that's over our lives, over this church. We thank you for our purpose and we Thank you for the Holy Ghost. As we leave this place but not your presence, we're mindful of the spirits that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. That we're going to be guarded and we will, we will see everything through your word. Now unto him who's able to keep each of us from falling. He alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit of God remind you and I that we are servants of the Most High God. And he said he doesn't want us to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. That's why you got to read, baby. You got to pray, stay locked in the prayer, and keep your face in that book. And he won't be a thief coming back in the night. You'll be like the five virgins that had oil in their lamps. You won't miss the door when it closes. 
Be blessed. We love you. God bless you. Hope to see you on Sunday. The Lord loves you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he expand you. May he bless you richly. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Take us home, man. We love you.